BC today. It is Thursday, February 22nd. Great to be with you all and on this nice kind of big rally day in the market, which is great to see now and again. You had uh, the Dow actually was up uh, 456 points. And uh, I don't remember a time when the NASDAQ point gain was basically the same as the Dow. The NASDAQ was up uh, 460 points. So they almost were up the same, even though one of them's in the 38,000 range and one of them is uh, about a third, a little more than uh, half or, or sorry, a little more than a third of that. So um, big day in markets, obviously NASDAQ was at 3% and the reason was um, driven by um, uh, uh, more uh, euphoria in, uh, in artificial intelligence and generative AI. And so this space in the, in the market is driving a lot of attention. And there was a big earnings out uh, from NVIDIA, which is one of the lead, lead chip makers in that space yesterday that I mentioned in DC today. But the stock opened today and, and, uh, and traded well all day, frankly. It, it beat, but it didn't beat by as much as some had hoped. Um, so I was curious to see if the thing would actually close um, as good as it traded, and it certainly did on the day. And I think a lot of that um, enthusiasm and what I've called some euphoria in, in tech in general is just running through through markets. And so it's just feeling more and more um, to me like 1999. This is what we dealt with back then. Obviously, it was a long time ago. Um, but and, and I'm not to say I'm not saying that in NVIDIA or these great companies are going anywhere. There's a lot of what happened in the, in the late 90s with the Internet stocks. Think of pets.com or Webvan, you know, these big, you know, very uh, successful from a stock perspective and valuation perspective, companies end up going to zero. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that uh, valuations are very, very stretched. They're very expensive. There's a lot of euphoria in that space and it's just driving markets. And at some point, these valuations are going to matter a whole lot. Um, we didn't see that today. Um, so again, it feels, feels like 99. And interestingly, and coincidentally, with a big rally day, you actually had another market close at an all-time high, which was Japan. The Nikkei, Nikkei closed at an all-time high, which wasn't just a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago, was in 1989. So it feels like 99 in US and it feels like 89 in Japan. Um, so I was 12 trading baseball cards instead of stocks at that point. Uh, the Berlin Wall had just come down. So, you know, think about how long that is. So when I talk about overvalued markets and bubbles and things, just understand they're, they're real. You can look at the depression in the U.S. and where markets traded out right before that and how long it took for markets to get back to where they were. And look at something like a Japan <clears throat> and understand, you know, what we've been through in the dot-com era, um, at least in my vintage and frankly, David's vintage, that we're sensitive to these things. They, they are important to keep an eye on. So all that to say, um, David had a nice section and asked David there about inflation and food. Um, it's, it's a very common thing. All of us, all of us eat as, as people. So, you know, people are well aware that the Big Mac costs more and, and a gallon of milk costs more and those types of things. And, and I hear it a lot from clients. But technically, over this entire period of time, including the pandemic anomaly, inflation in food has only averaged about 2.3%. Um, so food for thought, pun intended there. I just made that up. Um, let's see. We had uh, initial jobless claims on the day come in better than expected, meaning lower. We thought it would be around 217. They came in at 201. Continuing claims were also better. So continued robustness in the employment uh, 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 market, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. So we've got inflation moving lower. We've got uh, earnings that have done quite well. And, um, you know, all these things are not necessarily bad. They're good. And so if interest rates are not going to come down in March or May, maybe it's June or July or, you know, then, uh, then I don't, I don't know that that's a, a negative thing or not. I view it as, is positive. The, um, PMI data, it's just a flash read for the month of February. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're not quite done with the month. So flash read on PMIs, Today came in a little bit better than expected. Actually, the, the composite, meaning manufacturing and services, was right in line. Inside of that number, uh, services underperformed, manufacturing uh, hugely outperformed. Yeah, but both of those components of it were in, uh, in expansion territory, so above 50. And those are also good things. Existing home sales <clears throat> excuse me, were up 3.1% on the month, but still down one7 on the year. 
Uh, so housing is still stuck, right? As I've said many times, we're in a frozen, frozen kind of thaw, need a thawing out in our housing market, but it isn't happening yet. Mortgage rates are still too high. Um, so all that fun stuff to say, uh, obviously a great day in markets and, and I'll take it any day of the week. The uh, technology sector um, from top to bottom was up 4.35% as a sector. So quite a day, quite a day indeed. Um, all that to say, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Dividend Cafe as we always do in your inbox. And there isn't a lot in the economic calendar tomorrow. It's pretty quiet. But then there's a lot going on uh, next week. So we'll be back with you on, on uh, DC Today next week and D Dividend Cafe tomorrow. And I wish you all a lovely weekend. Thank you. Mm -hmm.